For my historical presentation, I decided to make a Draw My Life of Emilio Aguinaldo, the first president of the Republic of the Philippines. Emilio Aguinaldo was born on March 22, 1869 in Kawit, Cavite, Philippines, which is a Southeast Asian country in the Western Pacific. Emilio was the youngest of eight children, and his parents were Trinidad Femi and Carlos Aguinaldo, who were wealthy and influential people. In fact, Emilio's father was the mayor of Kuwait. Emilio faced a rough childhood, almost dying of smallpox, and a year later, almost drowning. After his close encounters with death, he received a basic education from his great aunt and eventually began to attend his town's local elementary school. In 1880, he attended Colegio de San Juan de Letran in Manila, pursuing a secondary course. However, his studies were cut short when his father passed away in 1883 and he moved back to his hometown to help his mother manage the family farm for several years. In 1895, Emilio was elected the head of Binacayan, a city not far from home, and participated in trade voyages and inter-island shipping. Trade voyages were so dangerous that once, he fought and subdued a man-eating shark on a voyage, thinking it was merely a big fish. Later, Emilio Aguinaldo played a huge role in the Philippine Revolution. In 1895, he joined the Katipunan Rebellion, which was a secret Filipino organization dedicated to rebelling against the Spanish and achieving independence for the Philippines. His position in the rebellion grew from lieutenant to general in the span of a few months. The same week that he became general, his troops led a successful attack on Spanish colonists, and in 1896, the entire Philippines revolted against the Spanish. He gained total leadership of the revolution against Spain, when the former leader, Andres Bonifacio, was executed. Throughout the revolution, Aguinaldo achieved many victories and was able to drive the Spanish out of their territory. During that time, he also married Hilaria del Rosario and they had five kids. In 1897, Aguinaldo reached the Treaty of Biacna Bato with Spain, which stated that he and his troops would peacefully surrender and go into exile in Hong Kong if the Spanish gave them amnesty, paid them 800,000 pesos, and began making reforms. Neither side kept up their bargain, and in May 1898, the Spanish-American War broke out, which Aguinaldo saw as a perfect opportunity to rebel against the Spanish by helping the U.S. His strategy did not help the Philippines progress towards independence, and so Aguinaldo left Hong Kong and returned to the Philippines to continue his rebellion against Spain. Finally, on June 12, 1898, Aguinaldo declared independence for the Philippines, freeing his country from 400 years of oppression under the Spanish. He drafted the first Republican Constitution of the Philippines, but unfortunately, the Philippines was ceded to the United States in December 1898 under the Treaty of Paris. But on the bright side, because of his grand accomplishments for his country, he was sworn in as the first president of the New Republic of the Philippines under the Malolos Congress in January 1899. Two weeks after his inauguration, a Filipino soldier was shot by an American on the outskirts of Manila sparking the Philippine-American War on February 4, 1899. This was one of the bloodiest wars in American history. Aguinaldo fought using guerrilla tactics, meaning he avoided small battles and instead resorted to ambushes, massacres, and retribution in order to combat the traditional but strong American army. After three years at war, on March 23, 1901, Aguinaldo was captured by American General Frederick Funston. He swore an oath of allegiance to the U.S. and declared peace with them on April 19, 1901, marking the end of the first and only Republic of the Philippines. After his presidency and involvement in the Philippine Revolution and Philippine-American War, he retired from his public life. Aguinaldo established the Veterans of the Revolution, which was an organization dedicated to arranging the pension plans of veterans and also making affordable payment plans so veterans could purchase land. He transformed his home into a monument for the revolution, and it still stands today as the Aguinaldo Shrine in Kauai. In 1921, his wife passed away and he married Doña Maria Agoncillo in 1930. Additionally, he attempted to run for president again in 1935, but lost to Manuel Quezon. In 1941, shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese invaded the Philippines during World War II, and Aguinaldo cooperated with them, expressing support for Japan against the United States. He was arrested by Americans for collaborating with the Japanese, held trial, and was eventually freed from prison. On July 4, 1946, after World War II, 
The United States recognized the Philippines' restoration and independence, which was what Aguinaldo had been striving for for so long. The current president at the time, Diosdado Macapagal, changed the official date of the Philippine independence from July 4th to June 12th, the date that Aguinaldo declared independence 48 years before. He passed away from a heart attack on February 6, 1964. Emilio Aguinaldo, the first and only president of the Republic of the Philippines and the president of the revolutionary government, is a symbol of Philippine democracy and independence. Without his resilience and the long fight that he put up, the Philippines may never have been independent from Spain.